Dude, what song am I thinking of? Um. Hi, yo, 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 yo. Um. Dude, what am I thinking of? <laughs> Dude, I want to play a song. I can't remember it. Is this it? This is hey, not it. Girl. <laughs> Dude, where my fucking song? Uh, uh, dude, remember that song I used to play? It'd be like, three, two, one, let's go. Ban it amp. No, no. Um, I would play it at the beginning of every stream. It had a bunch of like lemons in the. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, this was it, right? No. <laughs> I found it. Play. <laughs> I found it. Oh, thank God. Hello. Hi. Carl the man, descriptivist, W cranny. I'm still sick, by the way. I'm still sick. What you're uh, you're witnessing a man po powering through. Uh, One, two. Just to be clear, my my <laughs> this is my I'm no doctor house, okay? I have a few proven methods to deal with sickness. Number one, I eat soup. Okay? Very good about that. Number two, I drink Gatorade. Number three is I watch old Nicolas Cage movies while sitting my ass down on the couch. <laughs> so I watched The Rock today, which is a Nicolas Cage movie about him playing an FBI biologist who uh, has to infiltrate Alcatraz because some rogue U.S. Marines have taken it over and are threatening to gas San Francisco unless they get a hundred million dollars because they're patriots. <laughs> that's, it's, that's the plot of the movie. Um, but, but in order to stop these rogue Marines, they need to break out. They, oh, sorry. They need to have the help of Sean Connery, an old prison escapee from Alcatraz back when it used to be a prison. He's the only one that knows the tunnels. You know what I'm saying? So Sean Connery and Nick Cage have to team up as like the veteran and the new guy to break in to stop all the... It's really a, a phenomenal movie. Would that make him like 90? They didn't really do the math that well. Because uh, the movie came out in 97. I don't know when Alcatraz stopped being a prison, but I don't know that it would work like that. Um... Hey, Drake, have you watched Zardoz starring Sean Connery? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Hey, Drake, did you see the potential Batman Beyond animated film? I did, and I re hopefully you know that I did because I responded to it already. But yes, uh, check it out. Batman Be Oh, wait, I want to leak my uh, PowerPoint there. Uh, Batman Beyond animated film looks good. Unfortunately, if you're looking at this and thinking, oh, damn, that looks hype. It was canned. <laughs> it was just a pitch that got not approved. But it looked cool as fuck, dude. It would be so sick. They should still do it. Let's get it trending, okay? Batman Beyond. Bring it back. Make a sick movie. Give us what the fans want. We are literally dozens of us. Uh, isn't that just Spider-Verse art style? Oh, get over yourself, bro. <laughs> Come on, seen one animated movie. Now they all have to be like that. Uh, getting real boss baby vibes. <laughs> One Fix the lights. <laughs> Uh, close all. Where's my song? 
where's my song that I was just playing that we all loved? Anyway, I know what it is now. Nice dog shirt. It's not any dog. I'm sorry, you're not aware this is Maya? This is my dog. <laughs> the greatest dog on earth. Sorry to all other dogs, but she's the cutest, most pleased dog. Uh, how's Chevy doing? Chevy's doing great. He's a very sweet cat. Actually, you guys missed this, but um, before Genesis, Chevy got in a fight with another cat. Got a pretty big scratch over his eye. However, knowing how much of a fighter Chevy is, uh, the other cat's probably dead. <laughs> Far as I can tell, Chevy's been fucking tearing fools up. Uh, but we didn't we didn't find him. Uh, does she look cool? Uh, it's he. Chevy's a he, and he looks fine. He's he's actually already better. This is this is a little bit a while ago. Um, have you heard the cause of death by Immortal Technique? No, probably not. The only Immortal Technique song I know, actually I know two Immortal Technique songs. <laughs> One of them is Dance with the Devil, which is what everybody knew and memed on from back in the fucking day. And then I know one song where he refers to cocaine as Parajo, maybe? Like, I don't remember. I was in Spanish class at the time, and I listened to that song. And, and I think Parajo means parrot, but, like, he used it to mean cocaine. And I asked the teacher, oh, excuse me, Miss... I don't remember her name. <laughs> what does Parajo mean? I'm trying to learn Spanish. And I wanted her to say cocaine. I was like Pepe laughing. Oh, Perico. Yeah, Perico. And then she goes, I think uh, it has like a normal translation. Uh, what was it? it was parakeet. Yeah. And she's like parakeet. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, Miss Teacher, are you sure it means parakeet? <laughs> are you sure? I think she said parrot, but whatever. And I'm like, uh, are you, are you sure? <laughs> and uh, she's just like, yes, that's all it means. And so I never got my, uh, I never got my, my payoff. But that is my only re recollection of a mortal technique. I'm sure I listened to more of that, but this is a while ago. Um, did you see they announced a new Monkey Ball game, Nintendo Direct? Yeah, I did see that. Uh, they didn't show very much, but it looks cool. They didn't show very much. Wow, class clown over here. I wouldn't say I was a class clown, but I did a little clowning <laughs> in the class. Do you know what I'm saying? There's a difference. I did a little clowning for sure. If you don't clown a little bit, um, hope you're feeling better today. I'm not. <laughs> you know what? I'm fucking not. I don't feel better at all. My throat is sore. I got a fucking bad cough. I was sweating all night. I got a little bit of a fever. Um, uh, sucks to suck, but whatever. I'm sure I'll get better tomorrow. I'm sure I'll get better tomorrow. I don't think it's COVID though. My assumption is it's not COVID because there's nothing respiratory about it. I can breathe fine. Uh, yeah, it's just more like it's more like fever. It's really feverish and then sore throat. Yeah, it's probably Glancer. Yeah, it's probably fucking Glancer. You stupid ass. Uh. Have you seen the hype as fuck Elden Ring DLC trailer? I, I love your energy, I love your passion. Let's let's do an exercise together <laughs> where when we click on a stream, we'll read the title aloud. So this one says, Nvidia earnings, comma, what's the second thing? Elden Ring DLC. Does that mean, do you think possibly, that during this stream, I'm gonna talk about the Elden Ring DLC? You think that's possible? <laughs> you think that maybe could be on my list of topics? In fact, one of my top two topics uh, yeah, let's watch it. Fuck it. Elden Ring DLC. I have not seen it. Of course I didn't see it. You know why? Because I want to watch it with chat. I saved it. I wanted my authentic raw reaction. Or, more realistically, I watched it 40 times and practiced my reaction in the mirror. Getting every micro detail of my face down to create the perfect viral clip. Miyazaki, what? Okay? So either way, we're set. Oh God, I'm sick, bro. Oh God, I can't. If I can't do a good Miyazaki, what? Oh, what's the point of going live? All right, uh, let's see. Elden Ring DLC trailer. No, 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 no. 5.8 million views in 13 hours. 
That's what I should do as a YouTuber. Why don't I just create, like if you really wanna be a good YouTuber, what you should do is create one of the most profound and respected games of a generation and then make trailers for the DLC for it. That's how you really make money because those trailers get huge view counts. Uh, okay, I'll work on that. Let's see, let's see, let's check this trailer out. Mm, it's as shrimple as that. <laughs> You're right, it's as shrimple as that. Uh, okay, let's see. Possible return of the Glamorai. One of my most fun eras of streaming was playing Elden Ring, despite the fact that I spent seven hours on Tree Sentinel. Uh, very excited to see what they have cooking for this um, expansion. I did see that it costs $40, which is pretty hefty for an expansion, but I assume they've packed so much fucking content that it's more than worth it. Let's see. Peggy 16. Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. Okay. Sure. I remember this fight. There is nothing more fun. terrifying. There's the big fucking egg. Using horse at the beginning, L. Tree is different. <laughs> okay. In that forsaken place, blood must. I figured. Spill. I figured there'd be some blood spilling blood in an Elden Ring DLC. They are truly faithful. You will never. Sorry to pause, but I'm a little worried. So at no point in these beautiful, majestic, gorgeous environments have I seen a little pop-up that says, try finger butthole 10 times in a circle <laughs> around every important artifact. And that worries me. That worries me. Do you know what I'm saying? Because that really is how I get my immersion. Uh... It will never sink. They just happen to be on the losing side of a war. Cool fucking boss. Looks like a really annoying enemy. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, this is obvious. I mean, it's like, there's almost no point in making a trailer. I'm definitely gonna play this game. I'm definitely gonna buy this game. They kind of had me hooked. No matter what, this trailer could be anything. Wouldst thou truly lordship sanction in one so bereft of light? Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. I you too are keen to know. Machine gun, really? Magic machine gun. Just what kind of Mikkelner is doing here? Uh, is that going to be the ultimate final boss? Probably not, actually. They wouldn't show it. Big Porcia Hippo. Those <laughs> It is funny. Like, this does look very, very fun and good to me. But every one of these enemies, I can sort of see, like, two, three, four hours of my life gone. <laughs> I'm seeing like anger, frustration, songs, death. Uh, it's a real, it's like a real, it's like a Vietnam flash forward. Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death in the embrace of restless flame. Come now, touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. Yeah, it looks sick as fuck. Oh, wait, is there a bonus? Is there a little... Yeah, what if at the end they showed, like, Rick Sanchez? <laughs> what if they did, like, Fortnite, and, like, at the end they had, like, a celebrity or fucking... <laughs> 
Just pop in. Yeah, Goku or some shit. <laughs> Just like a wubba lubba dub dub, but off in the distance. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, metaverses, they're all the rage now. If you want to make real money, don't make a great game. Make a decent game that you can pack a lot of IP into. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm spraying. Hey, Truck, have you seen the new Monkey Ball? I talked about it. Yes, I have. I have seen it. They didn't show very much. But I'm cautiously excited because it's new levels uh, and the same controls. So how can you fuck that up? But they have fucked it up in the past. But I don't think they can fuck it up too much. Um do 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 uh hi Lavi Liam bottom feeder thank you for the prime uh Alec Donaldson thank you for the seven months Lickne Firecrow thank you for the 12 months Devin Lettuce thank you for the 22 months I'm sure Big A will complete this DLC in a timely manner. You didn't spell manner right, so check jokes on you. Uh I will complete this DLC by playing it when it comes out until I beat it. <laughs> this will not be a one year long, once a week schedule, okay? I will play this. When does it come out though? When does it come out? When does it come out? Come on, just ask me the question. When does it come out? Have they answered that? 21st of June, 2024. 21st of June. Easy. That is Elden Ring week. Let's see what, uh, let's see what else they got. Wow, you can get a statue of Messimer the Impaler. And I'll, uh, the art book would be pretty cool, actually. Um, no uh, cheap-ass fucking bag for a helmet. <laughs> so not quite as good as the Fallout pre-order, but what are you going to do? Um, yeah, it looks good. Miyazaki said in the interview, there's multiple bosses harder than Melania. Can you link me that interview? Possibly pause champ. I uh, would love to learn more about what he's talking about for this. Um, though someone already sent me a uh, Atrioc time tracker bosses Elden Ring. Uh, here, this. Somebody <laughs> made this. As long as, listen, if they're harder than Melania, no problem. That won't take us too long. But if they're harder than Tree Sentinel, <laughs> I'm going to lose a full fucking calendar workday per boss. So that's the issue. That is the fucking issue. Uh, this is how long it took me per each boss in Elden Ring. I have article week, but I can't send. Ishrock, here's the interview. Oh, here it is. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Exclusive. Elden Ring director answers all of our Shadows of Erd Tree DLC questions. Let's see what he's got. Uh, I feel like this is a really old photo of Miyazaki they use constantly. Because I remember when I was working on like an Elden Ring um, marketing Monday. I used this photo. <laughs> this is old. Get a new photo. Um, okay, let's see. Can you set the stage for us with Shadow of Erd Tree? Where is it taking place? It's a brand new land, Pog. Entirely separate, physically separate map. A warp of sorts to get there. That is sick. Okay. I like that. Entirely fucking new. Basically getting a new fucking game almost. That's awesome. Um... Get to walk in the steps of Mikola. Okay. Oh, Gleb Shido's in it. That's sick. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. I've always wanted to see what his POV was. Um, okay, similar to the base game. Dungeons. Yeah, it's going to feel like the base game, which is great. The base game is amazing. Uh, approximate the size of the world. It's comparable, if not larger, than the area of Limgrave from the base game. So it's Limgrave sized. How big was that? Let me see. Elden Ring map. 
How big was Limgrave? Uh, fuck. I need like a labeled map. Is Limgrave? Limgrave is like this, right? Am I crazy? This is like really blurry, but like it was this, right? Okay. So the green and, and the blue? Or just the green? Okay. Hmm. I mean, yeah, it's a decent size. It's definitely like <laughs> these areas are fucking huge. <laughs> I think this is like I feel like most games are Limgrave size, to be honest. I feel like most games that I buy, if you add it all up, they're about <laughs> Limgrave size. And then this game had fucking all of this. This is pretty good. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty good. Especially if it's got underground or like, you know, other areas. Um, so I think it's cool. That seems good. What else? Uh, you mentioned Mikola earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to spoil too much on the characters. Um, there was a lot of striking bosses and enemies that were revealed in this trailer. And I was wondering if we could just go through a handful of them one by one and you could explain who or what they are, tell us an anecdote about their design or anything you want. Uh, there's a giant basket of flaming kindling. Uh, okay, he's telling me the history. It was a terrible weapon you used in war. <laughs> it was a really gruesome weapon. Okay, I get it. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, listen, I don't want Miyazaki to tell me the lore. I want YouTubers to tell me the lore after the fact. <laughs> in a slow, plotting voice over beautiful footage, okay? Miyazaki, it's not your job. Keep it to yourself, yeah, <laughs> okay? Um, yeah, I want a 10 hour, 20 hour video that I can really sink my teeth into. Uh, but let's see if you can tell me about, okay. This man in red with the snakes and the flames is the key figure of this DLC. Um. Okay. <laughs> George R. R. Martin has not written anything new for the sake of this DLC. <laughs> Bro, you know he only wrote like a single fucking one pager for the first one? It was like so basic. And then in fucking three years, three years and the phenomenal success of the first game, he couldn't write another fucking... Half pager for this one. <sighs> uh, but it would stare to fair to say that he and his mythos that he created for us are involved in the creation of Shadow Virtue in the same way. Um, okay. We have exchanged emails. He wrote an email at least. Hey! Hey! Credit where credit is due. George R. R. Martin wrote a full email and hit send. That is big. That is progress. My dude is finishing tasks. <laughs> that is a complete written uh, piece of content. Um, we haven't been able to meet and speak in person. He's just so busy. We haven't had that chance yet. <laughs> I believe he is busy. Um, don't get me wrong. I do believe George R. R. Martin is busy. He has to finish that fucking book. He does multiple TV shows. HBO is farming Game of Thrones as much as they can to try and get back. I believe that, but also I follow his blog and he posts like, you know, he's like a huge fucking fantasy football guy. <laughs> like, yeah, he talks about the fucking Jets all the time. You know, he's like, he writes fucking blogs about the Jets. He's not that busy. You know what I'm saying? He's just rich and happy, which is different. That is different than being... Uh, you know, he's not like a coal miner strapped to his desk. Uh, it's been two years since Elden Ring has launched, and much of the hardcore audience have already found the best gear, fought the toughest bosses, and they're at such high levels, I imagine it must be difficult to come up with content that can provide a challenge for those hardcore fans without making it too hard for some of the more casual Elden Ring players. With all that said, how do you approach difficulty with a DLC such as this? Our approach to difficulty has not changed to Elden Ring. 
We want to create a challenging experience that tests the players and gives them a feeling of satisfaction and accomplishment when they get through these struggles. There's still a freedom of approach and breadth of strategy to these encounters. And that means both how you approach them if you want to face these challenges and come back to them later, never happening, motherfucker, or circumvent them and find another way around. Nope, not happening either. <laughs> <laughs> they will find for our most hardcore players they will find optional bosses who've been tuned in a similar way to the likes of Melania who are not crucial okay oh god <laughs> yeah you might remember her they're not crucial to the completion of the DLC but they're an optional extra to help challenge for those who are so inclined um wait so he's not saying there's more than Melania he said there's there's not another boss exactly the same level as Melania. It's not the fact that it's only a lesser level to Melania, but we have prepared bosses on that with similar mindset within DLC. One that will challenge a player and hopefully be as memorable as Melania was. Okay, he's kind of vague about it. He's kind of vague about it, but he doesn't say like openly there's going to be five Melania plus bosses. All right. Tree Sentinel V2. <laughs> I would fucking love it if I mean, um, I'm a little interested how they handle levels and all that. To me, it's almost like it'd be cool if you warp in and then it instantly takes all of your levels and items and armor and gear. <laughs> and it's like, oh, no, you fell down a fucking level sucker pipe. <laughs> Damn, the lore, but you don't have any more levels. Um, and no, here's a tree sentinel. Uh... Oh, no, you got amnesia, and you forgot how to cast all your spells. Uh, I prefer that because I like a fresh start. I don't, you know, I don't want my character to come in too strong and ruin my fucking uh, playthrough, but we'll see. Um, yeah, otherwise, I think it's going to be pretty hard. I feel like if they come in and, like, the, the bosses are kind of, like, you know, I don't know, normal. <laughs> like a random boss you'd run into in Kaelid or something. I think that it's going to be fucking... A little easy, right? Um, just because by the end of it, I, I think I beat every single boss. Uh, so I, there's no items I'm, you know, I don't know. I think that's crazy. Uh, but I'm sure the optional guys will be sick. Considering the other Dark Souls DLC bosses are going to be insane. They've never missed on difficulty. Great. Great, 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 great. Uh, perfect. Well, then I'm very excited. Again, I've never actually played Dark Souls. I only played Sekiro, which had no DLC. Um, I loved it. And then I played, what else did I play? I played one game before Sekiro. Didn't I? I guess there's Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight, Sekiro. Hollow Knight's not even, have I only played Sekiro of, of their lineup? Let me see all their games. Uh, from soft games. Yeah, that's it. I mean, they only have Dark Souls and Sekiro, right? In terms of those type of games. Let's see. F fucking. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm missing one though. Oh, Elden Ring. I mean, Elden Ring, obviously. Elden Ring and and Sekiro. But I never played Demon Souls. I didn't play Dark Souls. Uh, this is all of them ranked on difficulty. Sekiro number one. But Sekiro didn't have a DLC, and he said the DLC is harder. Dark Souls 2, number 2. Armored Core, that doesn't really count. Demon Souls. I mean, I'd love to play another one. But I honestly am going to tell you, and I, everyone gets mad when I say this, but Dark Souls 1 is an ugly fucking game. <laughs> it's so muddy. It's so fucking muddy, dude. I don't want to... It doesn't... Like, I don't, I get dread. I'm having to stare at it, and I don't want to play it because of that reason, even though I probably would like it. Uh, I'm a little bit of a graphics Andy, which is going to be relevant in about 10 minutes when we talk about NVIDIA earnings today, which I think is very interesting. Extremely interesting. Uh... Line always goes up. Line always goes up. Stocks to the moon. Everybody's retirement is safe. Let's go. Uh, are you mogging with a 
Callith Watch Big A Be Honest. Bro, can I be dead honest with you? I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even trying to do a thing. I have no fucking idea what you're saying. I don't know what call life is. I I only vaguely sort of understand what mogging is. Um I've never been to Mogwarts. I I I don't know. I don't know exactly what you're asking me or what you're telling me. Um he just normie mogged him. Okay. <laughs> Are you flexing with that watch? But what does the call life mean? I mean, yeah, I got, <laughs> I got my watch on. <laughs> um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, Samurai Morty. Thank you for the two years. For someone as intelligent as you, a Samurai Morty, to give two years of service to this stream means a lot. I very much appreciate it. Uh, Paddock on his wrist doing front flips. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, exactly. I only have two watches. I have this watch and I have my IWC. Those are my two watches. I, I alternate randomly. Um, you should watch Moist Critical's video about jelking and looks maxing. I saw it in my recommended. It's him holding a banana. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. I just watched the Super Bowl ad video, it's good. Thanks, bro, appreciate it. Uh, oh, let me ask you something, guys. <laughs> let me ask you something. Right now, while the video's still fresh and they won't be able to tell the difference. Mm, let's take let's take 20 seconds right now and let's all go to rocketmoney.com slash <laughs> Let's go to rocketmoney.com slash huh? Let's just click the button, put in our email and sign up for free, okay? It's really simple. It would mean a lot to me and the team as it is funding some projects we are trying to do. So I'm just gonna put it in. If you, for example, do not wanna spend money on a sub, but maybe think, hey, in a 30 second action, I could really support this stream, then just putting your email in, I will tell you this, unironically, I have used this app long before they paid me back when it was called Truebill. If you sign up and you link your account, you will find some recurring charge you want to cancel and it'll save you money. Almost assuredly, there'll be something you forgot. Um, so, you know, uh, it's pretty sick. I, it's my, it, the reason I really, really want you to do this is because I really want this sponsor to renew because it's like one of the very few sponsors where I don't where I like the product. <laughs> I like the product and they pay good and they want long-term deals. It's very rare. I very rarely get one that has all three. And so I'm like, I'm trying to push a little bit. I'm pushing it a little harder than I normally would. Hashtag ad, okay? Uh, I can guarantee you that I need my two JGEX subscriptions. How are you subscribed to RuneScape twice? <laughs> what do you, what, do, what? What do you need two of them for? Um, you have a Smurf and you want to pay for member on that? Multiboxing? <laughs> Listen, last time I played RuneScape was in computer lab of elementary school. <laughs> Just to be clear, and I would skip recess to go fucking play more RuneScape with my boys. Um... But I, I just don't think it's uh, it's something I would need two, two accounts for. One for me and one character I made for my future girlfriend. <laughs> how, how early into the relationship do you bring up the fact that you've made her a RuneScape character and pre-level it for her to save time? Is that first date? That's day one, okay? Uh, first message. <laughs> first message. Okay, based, 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 based. Well, here's here's my worry. Okay, what if she's only, you know, interested in you because of this amazing runescape? What if, what if you pre-level and gear up this runescape character? She goes, oh my god, and then you get catfished, out of all your. Yikes! Yikes! Then she's the one. <laughs> Then she's got that Sigma grind set, and now you're truly attracted?
Ah, I see. I see. You would know about RuneScape catfishing? I would. I have famously catfished somebody in RuneScape to get my party hat back. It was a formative experience for a 14-year-old Atrioc. Uh, no, they scammed me out of my fucking party hat. So I made a female account and said, Hi, want RSGF? <laughs> and then asked if I could wear the party hat to like look good when we're walking around Lumbridge. And then the second I got it, I fucking logged out. <laughs> Easy fucking clap. Scam me again, bitch. So you had a second account? Yeah, but it didn't need to be a member. We were in Lumbridge. <laughs> uh, I really think I should find one of you RuneScape DJs to pay me for my account. I need to find the password and log in, but almost assuredly that account is worth a lot of money because it has a lot of fucking Santa hats, a couple Halloween masks, and a couple party hats. It's It's gotta be like actually pretty fucking valuable. And I'll take that money and I'll use it to spend on fucking, uh, <clears throat> I'll use it to spend, actually let me look at it right now. How much is a RuneScape Santa hat worth? Cause I have a lot of those. Uh, Santa hats are worth, about a year ago they are worth Fucking 3.5 billion gold at current market price. <laughs> billion? Billion? How much is that in dollars? Price checker. Wait, okay. There's been, has Joe Biden been president in RuneScape? <laughs> The inflation's out of control, okay? Uh, it probably spikes around Christmas. Adriac endorses RMT. What is RMT? Um, I, I need to know how much, what is RuneScape GP to USD? Uh, One billion gold is worth around $300. So three billion is like nine hundred dollars. That's pretty good. I have a lot of Santa hats. I remember I was there on Christmas Day, ignoring my family <laughs> to play RuneScape. And back in those days, they would just spawn all over the ground. And if you found an area that didn't have a lot of players, you could just walk in a circle and picking them up. They would just boop, boop, boop. Um, yeah, I was fucking. I was. Damn, I really should figure that out. 900 bucks is, is no... I can get back my gambling losses. <laughs> Getting back my gambling losses by playing RuneScape is a sign of a true... Whatever the opposite of a generate is. A generate. <laughs> uh, I'm a true generate, dude. Um, Atrock, is there a new Hitman horse in the making? Um, A new Hitman horse in the making. I think... Me, Lincoln, Spectre War want to do some stuff together. We have not planned a Hitman Horse. That being said, there are two Hitman Horse videos that are more highly edited than usual that are coming out soon of ones we've done in the past. And a lot of people don't watch those live because they're kind of hard to follow live. So the actual video will be really sick, I think. Um, I watched the intro to one today. No, yesterday, but it was really good. Uh, Eric the Pooh did a really good job on it. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> are you going to play Helldivers? Just kidding. There is no room on the servers. Uh, I have not followed Helldivers too much. Like, compared to, like, the last big viral game, Power World, I at least followed a little bit to know what's going on. All I know is everyone likes Helldivers. I've been kind of sick and busy and traveling. Um, Josie Rosie Posey, thank you for the 28 months. Dr. Poppy said, thank you for the 17 months. Falling F, thank you for the 10 months. Appreciate the subs. Thank you very much. Um, Anja Hola, thank you for the five months. Willem the Friend, thank you for the 34. XG Waifu, thank you for the 13 months. XP Windows, thank you for the 22 months. Saber the Boss. Again, sorry if my voice sounds off. I'm a little sick. Um, there's been a real renaissance in games with friends, huh? It feels like every three months, we're just going to have a different game that goes viral that's fun to play with friends. 
It's really cool. Uh, that's cool. That's a good sign. I mean, yeah. Uh, Uh, among Us 2? Well, one day we can dream. We can hope we can dream. The big name ones suck. Looking at you, Suicide Squad. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm never putting this out, but one of my predictions is about this. And, you know, <laughs> there's a very obvious disconnect between what, you know, used to be considered AAA and what is indie and what people are playing. Uh, I'm going to hold it, though. <clears throat> Jim the North, thank you for the 24 months. I very much appreciate that sub, and I always thank you. And we'll continue to thank you. Mason Manns, thank you for the 15 months. Uh, in about two minutes here, I think I want to start talking about NVIDIA. Let me make sure I got all my shit in order. ba da ba 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 da ba yeah, 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 yeah. Um, does anyone have a really good? <laughs> um, a really good image of Jensen Huang of NVIDIA gripping onto a rocket ship loaded with bags of money as he flies to the moon. I could really use that for my outro slide. <laughs> Let's see if fucking ChatGPT can generate it. Uh, NVIDIA's Jensen Huang holding onto a rocket ship loaded with bags of money headed straight for the moon. All right, let's see. It won't generate real people. All right, well then, we're fucked. Someone draw it quick. Someone draw it quick. I'll just get a fucking, I'm sure someone made a meme of this. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> Uh, I'll use this one. I just need this outro slide. Did it better boot a boot a boot a boot a boot a boot? Boom, 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 boom. One second. One second. If you guys want to spam the camera clip as I make some clipping sounds, that would be very chat-like of you. <laughs> that would be perfect. If you guys want to contribute while I move a couple things around, just, you know, parroting what you hear with an emote that's appropriate would be cool. You know what I remember? I was kind of talking about this recently with some old Twitch coworkers, but this used to be a big debate. In the old school Twitch culture, there was like... Shocking as this sounds, more rampant racism in that every single time a black person was on screen, they would only spam try hard. And every single time there was like a Middle Eastern person, they would spam, um, what was it? A nail, a nail? Oh, uh, and then, uh, you know, there was just like a few emotes that were only used for that reason. And there was a lot of talk internally of like, well, do we ban these emotes? But then, you know, I was on the other side, I was on the counter argument of it, I'll just be honest with you, because I was like, okay, if we ban these emotes, then what we're basically saying is we can only have emotes of white people. <laughs> Otherwise they'll get misused, which is fucked, which is stupid. <laughs> like we can't just ban all emotes of black people. Uh, we have to like either moderate this, you know, help change the culture, put a damper on it, promote streamers that don't do this. Because if we just try to like ban the method, these people aren't, they're still bad. 
And yeah, so that we anyway we had this debate. I remember this debate being a big thing when we were at Twitch. Why not punish streamers? I remember I don't remember exactly how it was solved, but it has been like, I think on the whole solved. Like not obviously some communities are bad, but like I think it has been improved. Um. Uh, Compared to how it used to be in 2019 or 2017. Uh, you forgot Ming Lee being a Spanish. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, those were the, those were the ones. Um, anyway, that was relevant. Okay, so let me see. I have... Uh, wait. <coughs> uh... Okay, hold up. This part is important. <laughs> okay. Do, 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 do. Put that in there. Um. Put that in there. Put that in there. I need the last thing. I need the last thing. Uh, okay, last thing. Just, just, just bear with me one second. <laughs> I was sick today. All right, I didn't get to finish this last slide. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Got that. Uh, <laughs> that, looks, that looks bad. Wait. No, hold up. That looks bad. Uh, God, I want it to look not bad. Uh, <clears throat> any plans to watch Young Sheldon tonight? This is your first time chat message. No, there's no plans to watch it. We already watched the full thing three times. <laughs> there's no plans to watch it. Uh, everyone in chat has already seen it three times back to back. It's been our number one piece of content. What? A lot of people have said Ivermectin Day, and I would like to ask why Ivermectin is back in the news. What? What? Uh, what has gotten Ivermectin back in the news? COVID's back? Oh, so you're back at a, your Ivermectin maxing? Um, it cures cancer now. Let me see if there's new Ivermectin news. Ivermectin. There's nothing new, I think. All the articles are from 2021. You guys are just... <laughs> you guys are just mobile viewers still in 2021. Ivermectin is horse dewormer, I think. And it was promoted as a cure for COVID. Um, good year, 21. Everyone looks back on that year very fondly, I think. Okay.
Done. Done and dusted. All right. Perfect. Uh, good. Ready to go. Oh, wait. I got my, I got my image. This is Jensen Huang on a rocket ship filled with money going to the moon. <laughs> okay, obviously, I guess can't use his actual face because it just did generic Asian man. But if you'd like to see what it looks like, here's our options. Cushworm, thanks for the four months. Does he have a leather jacket? No, they did a bad job, honestly. As far as for people, it did a bad job. Wait, someone dropped $1,500? Did I miss? Am I crazy? Wait, what are you saying? No, 1,500 bits. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Buckle19. But you guys are doing $1,500, like a fucking ridiculous. You should watch Work by Historia Civilis. I will spend more bits on this if I must. You've spent enough bits. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll watch it on Get Smarter Saturday. That sounds fun. That sounds fun. Uh, anyway, this is him holding on to money, rocketing to this one's pretty good. <laughs> it just isn't him. Anyway, you get the idea. Oh, he's also on a sort of wheelbarrow cyber truck thing here. Pretty good. Um, four is the best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, No other jacket? Believe me, I know, bro. He used to walk around in leather jacket and sneakers every day. Uh, around the fucking spaceship office. <laughs> All right, this feels good to me. Uh, let me run a quick ad, and then we'll play the intro, and then I will. I want to give it of uh, this update on uh, what the fuck's going on with Nvidia right now. Um, did you actually see him in the office? Yeah, what's on? Uh, it's a very open plan office. Hey, Shrock, my dad isn't present in my life. Any advice? That is sad to hear. And I'm sorry for that. What advice do you think I could give to rectify that? Not knowing you or your dad. My advice is to, you know, if, if you cannot fix that problem, um, build a, you know, uh, meaningful and purposeful and uh, fulfilling life outside of him. It's not a requirement. Um, <clears throat> it will be harder, which sucks. It's not, it's not fair or fortunate, but uh, people have done it. Adopt him? I'm not going to adopt him. <laughs> All right, let me get this. Uh, gift your dad a sub. You could also gift your dad a sub to this channel. And then he comes in here. He's watching Marketing Mondays. Oh, wait. I actually have a story I forgot from Genesis. Some dude came up to me. You know, generally. Oh, cool, Mark. By the way, good to see you. Thank you for 31. Some people came up to me for pictures and stuff, right? And one guy comes up to me and goes, yo, Big A. And I'm like, what's up? You know, nice to meet you. What's your name? Where are you from? You know, who, who do you main or whatever? I'll smash questions. He's like, hey, uh, my dad's a big fan. <laughs> That's the first time I got this. He goes, yeah, my dad loves your content. Do you think I can get a video of you saying hi to my dad? Uh, like he didn't watch. And so the, he records the fucking video and I was like, hi, you should get your son to watch. <laughs> uh, so that was it. But yeah, he, I, that was the first time someone had come up to me and said, my fucking dad likes your content. Um, okay. Sorry if my voice is a little gone. I'm a little sick, as you know. Uh, I ran the ad. I uh, ran the ad right now. Run the ad, grab a water, and then we're going to fucking jump into it.
I put the freezer shirt in. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. The freezer shirt is locked and loaded. All right, James, hold on. <laughs> hey, Sergeant, thank you for the seven months. Goal on drawn SSBM. Thank you for the six months. Um, wait, I'm sorry. I have, to, I have to read this message to chat. <laughs> this guy said, at the end of my very first ever League of Legends game, the Master Yi on my team got tilted at me because I was new. He then wrote, I have 10K in the bank and a wife that loves me. I pity your lesser existences as our nexus exploded. <laughs> Literally most sane and stable League of Legends player. He didn't even call you a slur. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Don't, don't. Hopefully you understand from your first game, that is going to be every game. That is going to be every game. Please reconsider before diving into League of Legends ranked, bro. You are signing up a lot of your time to be spent with people that hate you for no gain. And by the way, I want to remind you that even if you win way more games than you lose and you climb all the way to fucking masters, nobody will care. <laughs> I just want you to know that. Unless you literally get to professional level, nobody will care. All of that time, all of that effort will mean nothing. You'll regret it. So I just want you to, I just want you to think about that. I want you to really internalize that. Unless you become faker or something. Um, surely my Street Fighter rank will meet. No, again, grinding rank isn't always a bad thing, even if it doesn't matter. It's You have to enjoy the process. The problem with League is that people like hate joy the process. <laughs> It's like the process is very, it's masochistic. They get like a weird psychological addiction. And I've been there. I'm saying this from, from fucking experience. Uh, sounds like someone's projecting. If anything, I'm the opposite of projecting. Because it got me a job and a career. <laughs> I'm the opposite of projecting. I'm just telling you in general. Your odds are you will waste that time and be sad. Uh, hi, Truck. It's me, your only viewer. For months, I have created illusion. Okay, I do love that, but we are going to time that out and uh, ban it because it's super fucking annoying. Uh, I don't know if you guys understand the difference between something funny and something super fucking stupid right when I'm about to start. Uh, uh, heard the boys ran your pockets at Genesis? Bro, I told the story yesterday. Yes, I got fucking rocked at Genesis for $1,200. Big A, I had a meeting with a AI quality assurance company today, and the instructor emphasized how much she loved humans. And at one point, she did finger guns and said, remember everyone, stay human. <laughs> what? <laughs> the, but this is not an AI you're talking to. You're talking to a person. So she was a human. She's a human that like wants to pretend to be a robot or what? I don't understand. Um, interesting. Mark Zuckerberg. Anyway, let's find out about it. Uh, right about, right about. Close, close everything, close all of this. Make sure I have my slides open. Mm, pause champ. Okay, close this. Uh, okay, without further ado, let's get into it. I need one thing from you, that is to tag yourself in the intro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special Marketing Monday edition on NVIDIA, a topic near and dear to my heart. 
uh, and extremely important in the world today. Sorry, I apologize in advance for my uh, appearance and demeanor and general attitude. It's because I'm sick. I'm sick with NVIDIA fever and also COVID probably. <laughs> I'm actually, no, I'm really sick. Uh, but NVIDIA fever has swept the nation. Today is NVIDIA earnings release day and the entire stock market, nay, the entire US economy seems to hinge on the performance of this one stock. How did we get here? What is going on? This used to be a gaming company that made chips for high-end nerds to crank up the graphics in Cyberpunk. How is this the most important company in the world over the past two years? I wanna talk about this. I wanna explain what today's earnings mean and I wanna explain the risks and challenges going forward as we rely on fewer and fewer tech companies to power all of our global economic growth. Again, uh, fourth quarter earnings changed from a year earlier. We are in the first quarter of 2024, but in the last quarter of 23, we saw six companies, basically the entire magnificent seven companies other than Tesla, produce all of the growth. The other 494 were down. So we say the market and everybody's retirement, which is here, is up slightly. Everyone's retirement plans are up a little bit and it's all because of six companies. Of those six companies, now only two are doing really well. Now it's down to two. The dynamic duo in 2024 is basically Nvidia and Microsoft. 33%, a third of every, you know, half of all Americans have their retirement plans in this. <laughs> A third of all of the growth came from one company, NVIDIA. And then 23% came from Microsoft. Basically over half of all of the growth in the top 500 companies came from these two alone. We are in um, almost never before seen levels of lack of breadth in the market. We are having very, very, very few companies dictate all of the move. The last times this happened are around the dot-com bubble in 1929. Again, I'm not saying we're in the same kind of thing, but I am saying, that level of concentration is scary. And uh, Goldman Sachs is calling NVIDIA before today's announcement, the most important stock on earth. Uh, as NVIDIA announced earnings today, there was widespread fear that if they missed on earnings, if they announced bad results, they hadn't made as much money as people thought, it would have tanked the entire market, dragged everything down with them. So a lot was riding on today's announcement. It was called the AI trades moment of truth. Even you suggest it's quote the whole ball game for the most crowded trade on earth. And that the most crowded trade on earth. Again, in the past few months, everybody, everybody and their mother have swarmed into Nvidia. <laughs> They've put their savings into Nvidia. Uh, Wall Street bets into Nvidia, but also average people are into Nvidia. Anyone you talk to has heard of this stock and they're putting money to it. It's become the most traded stock on Wall Street surpassing Tesla. And uh, a lot of people have a lot riding on this stock announcement today doing well. That is what NVIDIA is going to deliver tomorrow, whatever it may be, and the, the impact that it's going to have on the market, you gotta believe it's going to be a sizable mover one direction or the other. Um, we, uh, Sven he Henrik, I like this guy. We've now reached the part of the market Brett cycle where the entire market is dependent on one stock. <laughs> This is from this morning, as everyone eagerly awaited the announcement. Again, just to clarify, four times a year, four times a year, companies have a quarterly report where they announce how much money they made, uh, what their costs were, and how much they plan to make in the future. And that's when you see big movements in the stock price. Today's quarterly report from NVIDIA had a lot riding on it. NVIDIA is just Taylor Swift for dudes. <laughs> Everybody's buying the stock. Everyone's talking about it. It's become a meme. It's become a, a just a, a bonding mechanism for people, okay? At some point, people were making bets. Again, today, <laughs> uh, I don't wanna get too into the, the intricacies of options. Let's just say you can buy a stock and own a piece of a company and you know make money as that company gets more valuable, or you can make bets using options, basically gambles on whether it's gonna go up or down, how much and by when. These are much harder to make money on because you have to be right on not only the direction, but the timing. We are seeing people 
making bets <laughs> that NVIDIA will hit $1,300 by February 23rd. That means NVIDIA will double in the next two days and become the most valuable company in history. <laughs> it will pass even uh, Microsoft's peak in the three trillions. There are some people, like lots of people making this bet. <laughs> Which is insane, because even if they announce really good earnings, it's not likely to double in, in days. The level of degeneracy in the, in the market right now is crazy around NVIDIA. People are making absolutely lunatic bets. Um, yeah, we're looking at 3.2 trillion, uh, one of the highest ever. Um, so, yeah, insane. Uh, Nancy Pelosi has made a massive bet on NVIDIA and is praging that this earnings call goes well as she has something like $1.4 million to gain. Actually, I think more than that. She put in five million is already up like 1.4 million. It's crazy. So there's a lot riding on today's announcement and I tuned in, as did the world. I was in one of those live Twitter spaces. What happened when Jensen Huang took onto the call and announced what Nvidia was doing? And Colette Crest, guess what? They fucking did it. <laughs> Was it good or bad? It was good. Somehow, against all odds and all insane expectations, somehow, yet again, this leather jacket uh, king pulled another rabbit out of the uh, metaphorical earnings hat and saved the market for a little while longer. <laughs> Nvidia announced record setting growth Revenue more than tripled, profits rose ninefold. And then, and this is the most important part, they projected that they would triple their revenue again. Because <laughs> it can't just grow, it has to project continued growth into the future to hopefully eventually catch up to its insane price, which has far outstripped how much money it makes. Uh, record 265% revenue growth is moving the entire stock market. Again, everybody's retirement, which is in the S&P 500, is relying on these few tech companies to have insane growth. If they slow down even slightly, it's gonna cause such a catastrophic knock-on effect. Um, but Nvidia is, is holding true. They are holding strong, and they are carrying the weight of the world on their back. <laughs> so far, at least for another quarter, we're good. And I want to explain a little bit about how uh, NVIDIA got to this point and, and why they're so successful and why what you used to think of them may not no longer apply. Obviously, it has a lot to do with AI, as you're seeing here. Uh, and I think I've mentioned this in previous Marketing Mondays, but this is still it. There is an AI gold rush, okay? All tech companies worldwide, in fact, all companies in general, see insane opportunities to either save costs by firing people or do things more efficiently or... Uh, sign customers up for more things just to make more money from AI, okay? They see a lot of money in AI to change their business um, or they're buying into the hype. So it's a gold rush. And if you want to get into AI, let's say you're uh, this guy panning for gold and your name is Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> and you want to get on this gold, you think AI is going to make your business more competitive, you're going to make more money. Well, then you need this pan. You need picks. You need shovels, okay? The only seller in town of picks and shovels of the AI gold rush is NVIDIA. What you need to train large language models like ChatGPT or to do machine learning uh, is NVIDIA GPU data centers like these, the H100. These things can cost around $50,000 and you know how much they cost to make? Around 3,000. <laughs> NVIDIA takes some silicon sand out of the ground, designs it, gets a, people in Taiwan to make it. The whole thing costs between $3,000, $3,500 to make. They sell it for close to 50K. And it's one of the greatest businesses in the world because nobody else can design the chips like NVIDIA currently. Um, and all of these other tech companies, Microsoft, Google, Meta, companies in China, they all see the money from the AI gold rush, but they all have to stop by NVIDIA and buy endless amounts of these H100s and other data center solutions. 
So that's where we're at. Whether you're an AI startup or a big AI tech company, they're all buying NVIDIA. It's selling shovels like crazy, and it's selling them at a huge profit margin, which is why NVIDIA has gone from a nominally gaming company to this. This is their income statement from what we do, what they just announced today. Notice how gaming is a relatively small part of this massive business. $18.4 billion of revenue came from AI data center. Gaming is three. Now let me flash you back real quick. <laughs> this is just a year and a half ago. They were almost equal. <laughs> if you flash back a year before that, like when I worked there, they were dead equal. If not, data center was behind. <laughs> In the past very short period of time, the sales of this type of thing have catapulted uh, NVIDIA's profitability, okay? The vast majority of the money is coming from selling AI data center solutions uh, to other tech companies. And so, yeah, the, the, ga the, gap, is, the gap is crazy uh, compared to where it used to be. And you'll notice, you'll notice, uh, gaming growth is 0%. <laughs> This is no longer, in any real stretch of the imagination, a gaming company at all. Zero percent. They're not, they have completely pivoted to being an AI solutions company for other um, tech companies. And that has made them one of the most valuable companies on earth. So here's Jensen on stage talking about uh, AI supercomputers for the era of generative AI. <laughs> These big data centers that he's selling that are gonna make uh, him wealthy and other people take the risk. <laughs> Uh, and I want to explain a little bit of why that is basically how they suddenly came to dominate this market um, Very simply uh, For the long time stuff like this was done with CPUs the type of stuff Intel makes and uh, Moore's law which is that you know the the efficiency will double every year um, fell off and it turns out that GPUs are remarkably good for things like machine learning deep learning Training language development. That's, that's the basic idea. And they created a platform called, I think I have an image of it here. Maybe I don't. Uh, well, called CUDA. Uh, CUDA, which is like a software layer that goes on top of the hardware, which means they kind of own the full stack. So if you want to train stuff on AI, you use CUDA software, which means you learn NVIDIA solutions, which means if someone else makes a different one on a different chip, it's hard for you to learn, it's a pain in the ass. It's kind of like the way, you know, if you learn graphic design on Adobe software in school, then when you go to your workplace, they have to buy Adobe, because that's what you know how to use. Do you understand that? So people study AI using CUDA on NVIDIA GPUs, and then when you go to work in AI, you need to buy NVIDIA GPUs and use CUDA. That's the general idea. So this was incredibly, um, smart, uh, predictive of the future by NVIDIA and Jensen Huang. They saw ahead of the game, they planned this 10 years in advance, they worked to build it up, and then when the moment finally happened, they're so far ahead of the game. And that is how they've started to reap insane rewards, and it's very hard for other companies to catch up. Um, and based on today's earnings, things look good. Again, if you, the, I'm talking about the, uh, the positive side of it right now. Jensen says, they're in the first year of a 10 year cycle of spreading AI tech into every single industry. They're gonna partner with everybody. Everybody wants to buy their stuff, okay? So growth will not stop, according to him. Uh, he even says it's surging among nations, not just companies and industries, but now he's been talking a lot lately about nations. This has been his big push, which is that, uh, you know, um, let me explain this. These companies fucking hate that they have to buy shovels from NVIDIA. <laughs> they really don't like it because they're getting drastically upcharged. They are trying their best. They are all thinking and plotting of ways to no longer have to spend this much money on NVIDIA chips. They're always trying. So NVIDIA, seeing that coming down the pike, are trying to find new demand in the form of going around to different countries and saying, you need to have your own national AI system and we're gonna sell you the stuff to do it. That's the general idea. And nations have, you know, unlimited budgets. So it's a big growth area. That's why he's been talking so much about this nations thing. And all of this can go well, and Nvidia will keep growing and hit a fucking $8 trillion valuation and everyone will get their bags full and go to the moon and get rich, okay? This is a realistic <laughs> possibility. If you, if you read all this stuff, 
Uh, you look at the price targets. Everyone's going to the moon. There's no problem. I just think you can hear that story from anyone. You can hear that story from your grandmother or someone at soccer practice or your taxi driver. Everyone can tell you that story. AI is, uh, AI is the future. NVIDIA is the leader. <laughs> Put your money in. Don't worry about the price. Close your eyes and make infinite cash. Okay? Bye, bye, bye. I personally get nervous because throughout history, people have been told that story many, 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 many times. <laughs> And a lot of times it has ended in heartbreak and pain and tragedy. So I want to also, to be fair, give you an idea of the risks, okay? I wanna give you an idea of the risks. I know that Dave Portnoy will tell you that stocks only go up and only losers take profits. <laughs> but in this currently amazing life cycle of NVIDIA, if you've made a lot of profit, Taking some of that off the table is not a crazy idea. Again, similar things were said about Cisco during the dot-com bubble of uh, 2000, 2001. Cisco is the blue line here. NVIDIA is the pink line here. Uh, Cisco, at one point, was the most valuable company in the world because they said they were going to build um, you know, the bandwidth and the switches of the internet age. They were the picks and shovels per person of the internet age. And they became the most valuable company in the world and everybody bought in and it turns out that other people came in and could build that stuff for cheaper. They didn't have as big of a moat as they thought they had. And the company lost a lot of that value. The company didn't die, it's still grow. It's still, it's almost back to where it was at the peak, I think back then. But the general idea is that there was a bit of a mania, a bit of a bubble around this new technology. It's possible that is here. As Jeff Bezos likes to say, your margin is my opportunity. Now, when he says it, because he's a bald asshole, he means if you have a sporting goods store that sells this $70 net for students to play uh, baseball or softball, I'm gonna steal it, make it in a Chinese factory and sell it for $5 cheaper with Amazon Basics. <laughs> That's what he means, okay? Whatever profit you're making on this, I'm gonna undercut you by a little bit, and that's my opportunity. But it applies to all industries, okay? The fact that NVIDIA has such a massive margin, the difference between what they charge and what it costs them to make, means someone can come in, find a way to make the same thing, and charge a little bit less, and get a lot of the customers. What's stopping that right now is that these are really hard to make, okay? NVIDIA's world-class at designing these chips. There's only three companies in the, you know, not in the world, but there's only three major companies, especially if you're US-based, that can make, design this kind of stuff. And there's only one company that can really make it, which is TSMC in Taiwan. And this company is booked out for years. Every single, you know, minute of their foundry time is booked out by NVIDIA and Apple and Samsung and Sony for years and years and years. It's very hard to get any foundry time. So if you wanna compete with NVIDIA, you have to put up a whole lot of money to outbid and grab this time and you better have a chip you know is gonna sell. Uh, so it's a little bit spooky. That being said, people are doing that. <laughs> Microsoft and Intel today right after Nvidia's earnings announced they are striking a custom chip deal that could be worth billions. Microsoft is openly saying, we are gonna find a way around this. We're gonna do whatever it takes to try and get cheaper chips. We cannot be paying Nvidia these prices forever. This is happening. I mean, the markets are all moving around trying to find a way around this. Um, second thing that could happen, second risk, okay? The second risk could happen is that perhaps demand might slow. Nobody wants to talk about this, but I'll give you an example from my experience. When I first started at NVIDIA around here, oh, sorry, let me get this on. When I started at NVIDIA around here, 2016, 2017, we had an immediate spike and then a sudden crash of the stock. What happened here? Crypto. <laughs> People started buying GPUs like crazy to mine crypto. And everyone thought the demand would be infinite. And then there was a bit of a crypto crash. People stopped buying GPUs. They flooded the market with used GPUs. So nobody, no, even gamers didn't want to buy uh, new GPUs anymore. They just bought the used ones. And NVIDIA demand went off the cliff. We had like 
the markets were flooded with used GPUs. We couldn't get rid of them. It was a big problem internally at the company and it caused the stock to go way down. I remember there was a lot of low morale around the office. People were like bummed. Oh, I should have sold or whatever. Thank God they didn't, right? <laughs> uh, because this goes off to go off to the moon. But you understand that like this is possible. If, if there's a possibility that, um, for example, uh, GPT stuff like chat GPT, et cetera, does it make enough money? <laughs> if all this stuff they're promising is gonna make a lot of money, doesn't do it, they're already spending so much money to train and make these models. If they don't eventually print money, the demand is gonna eventually dry up fast. <laughs> so we're in a real situation where if the demand slows down, all of a sudden this graph for Nvidia looks way different. And then finally, there's Dark Brandon. <laughs> Dark Brandon has been talking a real big game about cutting Nvidia off from selling GPUs to China because there's a real uh, worry about the AI race getting out of control between USA and China. Nvidia is the leader in making AI chips. Uh, China is a major buyer of them. In fact, China buys 25%, basically a fourth of all of Nvidia's chips worldwide are sold only in China. And uh, Biden has been cutting off Nvidia from selling the latest chips to China. China still wants these fucking chips. <laughs> so what they're doing is finding ways to acquire them despite the ban and then force disassembling them to make their own AI startups, okay? They are trying to uh, back channel it. And if they do catch up, if China does reverse engineer this stuff and starts producing them cheaply, the market could get flooded with cheaper discount NVIDIA level GPU or close to NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, these are all things that you could worry about. Either the revenue slowing because they can't sell to China or China making copycats, etc. So all of this is not talked about enough because we're only focusing on the upside. Everything is good, straight to the moon. Let's not worry about it. Uh, million dollar price target, whatever. And I just want to mention a couple of the risks. Again, there's a Warren Buffett quote Price is what you pay, value is what you get. And this is the last thing I wanna mention, okay? NVIDIA, I think, I've worked there. I worked there five years. I own shares. I'm actually, it's a big part of my portfolio. I still have plenty of NVIDIA shares. I, I respect the company. I respect Jensen Wong. I think he's one of the best CEOs in the business. I think NVIDIA is a, a cutting edge company and you can feel good about investing in them generally. The problem is when the price gets to such stratospheric levels, <laughs> you might be paying more than what a good company is worth. It's possible for a company to be good and overvalued. That's what I'm saying. It is possible for a company to be a great executor, smart, cutting edge, and still be valued too much, um, which worries me. So, for example, uh, all four of these companies are part of the S&P 500's energy sector. They are the largest oil companies on earth take them and add them with every single other oil and gas and energy company in the entire S&P 500. <laughs> and you have a smaller market cap than Nvidia. Nvidia currently is valued more than every single oil, gas, energy company in the, in the uh, uh, stock market combined. That's risky because their income combined is 147 billion. <laughs> Um, and NVIDIA's is 19. So the, the level of growth NVIDIA has to get to to catch up to what it's worth right now is a little crazy. And all I wanna do when I talk about this is give you some semblance of warning because I feel like nobody else will. And I know, I know. You could say, uh, whatever, I'm going to the moon, have fun staying poor, whatever. I'm, I'm a holder, I have, but I've taken some profit off the table. I just want you to be careful. So now that I've said that, Let's all go to the moon, baby. <laughs> Let's all go to the fucking moon. All right, everyone all in, easy money, no worries. No worries. I just wanted to give you that update and hope that helps you understand NVIDIA's earnings today and what's going on in the market. Thanks for watching Marketing Monday. We'll have more next week. Uh... Anyway, I hope that helped. I, I just thought everyone was talking about it and I feel like most people don't understand what's going on. So I wanted to give, uh, you know, just a brief overview.
Uh, I'm a little sick. I didn't, I didn't get to add more of the wins and fails, but we'll be back on Monday with a wins and fails, which should be good. That's on 26th. Cool. Um, um, unrelated, but I loved your podcast appearance. You should do more. Uh, I will talk about this eventually. I, I am, um, I have a lot of mixed feelings about how that went down. Uh, I love the podcast, but it's unfortunate. Um, is this similar to the Tesla bubble? Um, it's similar to all somewhat bubbles in that there's a lot of excitement from people that have no understanding what they're buying. But again, the Nvidia has a better business <laughs> than Tesla. Tesla currently has fallen out of the Magnificent Seven, is actually in a struggling spot because they're a car company that doesn't have excellent margins competing with other car companies. But I, I just generally have seen a lot of these high flyers eventually come back to, down to earth in some way. So, um, you know, just 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 be careful is all I'm saying. Don't, don't think it can never happen. <laughs> That's all I, I know I sound like a broken record and I and anytime I say this company you should be a little cautious and then it goes up one dollar everyone's like what the fuck you lost me money I would have put everything I had and made fucking eighteen dollars a profit I just I just all I like to say is you know history is full of examples full of examples man and I, I just want to give you some ounce of caution because no one else will say it um do 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 um um do you think ai will follow the crypto path or the dot com path if i had to pick one of those two dot com the the example i would give is uh in the dot com bubble of the early 2000s everyone knew the internet was going to change the world what they were wrong on is how quickly they thought it would happen fast and there would be money made instantly. And all of these dot-com stocks went to the moon. And then they tanked because <laughs> it was too early. That's the problem. Eventually they bounced back. Amazon eventually bounced back, but it lost 90% of its value in the dot-com bubble. There's a possibility this could happen again with AI because we all know AI is real. It's more real than crypto. Crypto is kind of fake. <laughs> crypto is like, you know, there, there's no, it hasn't changed anything. Um, that's like a true bubble, like a tulip mania or a beanie babies. Like there's no real value there, but there is value, but you can still, <laughs> something can be good. And like, uh, I give you an example, like, um, what's a good example? I don't know. Okay. Like a black Lotus is a good card. It's a valuable card. <laughs> uh, I don't know how much a black Lotus goes for anyone. Magic expert. Five hundred thousand? Twenty K? Wait, there's a huge gap there. Um PSA ten. PSA ten black lotus price. Well the last one it looks like sold for five hundred and forty thousand. Uh but the previous one before that was twenty eight K, so they're <laughs> it's tough to say. The point is the Black Lotus is a good card. It's a valuable card. It has some value. Is it worth buying for five? If you bought it 500K, are you going to make a profit? Maybe. If you bought it for a million right now, are you going to make a profit? Is someone going to buy that for you for more than a million? If you bought it for 2 million, are you going to make a profit? If you come in and buy it for the way NVIDIA is priced, like 30X, you know what I'm saying? If you buy it for, <laughs> you know, $25 million, are you going to be able to resell that to somebody for a profit? Even though it's still a good card, there's a price that's too high. You have to understand that. I think people don't understand that. They think of only, is the company good? Is it growing? That's that's my worry. So uh, if your only goal is to find a greater fool, uh, you're going to be making some mistakes. do 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 I don't get why NVIDIA was dipping the last few days. It was panic. So 
uh, right before an earnings announcement, again, four times a year, people will usually, the stock will start to spike up as people get excited about the earnings. They're expecting NVIDIA to do really well. So they're every day buying, you know, zero day options and, and buying into the stock and everyone's crowding in because they want to make money when the earnings happens and it pops. But then right before earnings, people get scared because if the earnings aren't fucking astronomical at that point, uh, they're going to they're gonna tank. So they sell. So right before earnings, it tanked. That's what happened. And then the earnings came out. They were good. And it stock went back up again today. Um, do, 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 do. Um, invest in CS skins. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, do you know what super microcomputer stock? Again, this is all part of like the people gold rushing into AI. The easiest way I can tell you about super microcomputers is that like, I mean, it, it, again, with AI stuff, there is real practical use. So it's not crypto-esque. It's not just a meme. But uh, SMCI is kind of like the AMC to NVIDIA's GameStop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Remember how GameStop happened and some people got really rich and then everyone's like, I want to get into it, but GameStop's too expensive now. And then so everyone's like, oh, let's do AMC because it's cheap. Let's meme that one up. And so they all got into AMC because it was a lot cheaper. That is almost what's happening with SMCI. People want to get into the NVIDIA gold rush, but NVIDIA is so expensive already. They're worried. So they're jumping in. They're trying to like pop up a new thing. That's that's kind of what it is. That being said, it does have value. It just, again, I, I get skeptical of straight vertical lines on fucking stock graphs. Because it's usually a sign of irrational exuberance. Um, every billboard in SF has AI on it now. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's the it's the number one buzzword right now in in the market today. Every company is saying AI in their earnings reports. They are shoehorning AI into everything. It is the best way to juice your stock. Um, and not all of these companies are going to find ways to actually make money off of it. <clears throat> what do you think about Eli Lilly's growth? Uh, I think it's more stable. The, the main thing for Eli Lilly is the company that makes Ozempic. Or actually they make, uh, they make Munjaro, I believe. But it's all part of the same thing. It's the, it's the GLP-1 class drugs that stop your, they help with weight loss. And they've, their stocks have been absolutely mooning lately. And it's because um, it's a great business model. Someone signs up for Ozempic to stop weight loss. They have to take it forever because if they stop, generally it's the, the appetite comes back and they lose their progress. So it's like a lifelong thing. What those stocks are betting on is whether insurance companies will agree to pay for Ozempic. If that happens in 24 or 25, whatever, if insurance companies make it part of their plans to where you can just get your insurance to pay for your Ozempic because it's going to make you healthier, then a lot of Americans will get it on those plans. It's too expensive for them right now. Um, once that happens, the, they're going to print money forever if that happens. That's the big bet. Um, wasn't that Novo Nordisk? Yeah, they're both they're both riding the same wave. Novo Nordisk is Ozempic. Um, Eli Lilly is Manjaro, but it's the North American version. Uh, is it important for the U.S. to pursue domestically producing semiconductors? It's in, yes, yes, but they're very slow at it. They have the CHIPS Act. There's a lot of money. They've been throwing money at TSMC and Intel to make foundries in Arizona to make chips here so that if China invades Taiwan or something, we don't just lose access to chips. The problem is, again, this stuff is very, very, very expensive, very, very hard, needs a lot of expertise, needs a lot of time, needs a lot of training. Um, it takes billions and billions of dollars. And so it's tough. It's tough. Throwing money at it is not just a solution. You need like a lot. And Taiwan has like built their whole economy around it. Um, they're very good at it. <coughs> mm. 
I had to move from California to Canada. My salary has take just tanked just as much as the temperature. <laughs> uh, at least housing prices are cheap there. Pat me laugh. Pat me laugh. Uh, cost of living's cheaper though, outside of the housing. Crazy to go to Canada. Go to like if you move from like let's say SF to Toronto. <laughs> like your salary gets cut in half, but. Your housing price stays almost the same. <laughs> That's crazy, right? That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, they're both already too high, by the way. Um. <laughs> Cost of living is lower than SF, but not less than average. Yeah, exactly. But lower than SF is what I'm saying. You have a, yeah. SF is like the highest in the fucking world. Or not the world, but in, a, in, in USA. Um, try moving to London, UK. It's the same cost of living as SF and a third of the salary. <laughs> yeah, but at least you have lovely knife attacks. Do you know what I'm saying? You get some of the world's best food. <laughs> you get that fine British cuisine. Uh, and the weather. <laughs> You get the weather and the food. That's why people move to, to the UK. Uh, they do have good Indian food. Actually, honestly, London is a, a pretty good food city if you, if you have a lot of money. Uh, I remember I traveled to London with Ari when we were straight broke. This is in college. Because my, my family lived in Germany, so we took her to Germany. And then, um, and we didn't do anything. <laughs> we walked around London for, I don't know, two, three days. And we didn't do anything because we couldn't afford anything. All of the, even fish and chips was too expensive. Everything was too fucking expensive. Uh, the London Eye was too expensive. We, we did nothing. It was such an expensive fucking city. <sighs> Why aren't any of these multi-billion dollar companies able to replicate the quality of NVIDIA's GPUs? It takes time. It takes a lot of time. Focus, effort, money, time and money. Um, they're trying. They want to. They're working on it. But, you know, Microsoft just kind of having money doesn't make them experts at designing GPUs. Like, NVIDIA has been designing GPUs for a very long time. They built the whole business around it. Um, they've hired the right people. They've built a structure around it. They built software that locks people in. It's very difficult. It's, it's tough to unseat the current king. But they want to. They want to bad. Um, and AMD and Intel are trying. Um, do you think that NVIDIA has a value that is hard to replicate like Southwest? I, <laughs> bro. <laughs> This is, this is Southwest. The, <laughs> this is Southwest stock. Peaked in 2017. Generally declining. They actually, Southwest big value turned out to not mean that much. People just want the cheapest flight. <laughs> like what, like Southwest has a reputation for, I don't know. Uh, Slightly better customer service or whatever, more flight locations, couple things. Like they, they were, they, the problem is in airlines, you have to have something that lets you charge more. If you have, if you have no way to charge more, then you have no margin, which means you don't really have a business. You're racing to the bottom. And all airlines are constantly doing this because the customer at the end of the day doesn't really care. If you're not like a business class customer. The average customer just wants the cheapest flight almost all the time. And so airlines are constantly in business trouble. They need bailouts and they're, they're it's just a tough thing to invest in. Um, 
NVIDIA has a much bigger moat than Southwest Airlines, what I'm trying to tell you. Um, <clears throat> do, 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 do. Which do you think is going to happen first? Another company manages to compete performance at a lower price by the add to classes. I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't want to, um, that, that is something no one could tell you. <laughs> uh, and it's tough to even say whether, like nobody even knows if it will collapse. The thing is, I think we all know fundamentally that on some level, AI is going to change the world. It's going to be a part of things going forward. It's going to make a big predictor. But like, is it going to happen now? Is it going to happen soon? Because it needs to happen soon to make all this money make sense. If it doesn't happen soon, a lot of stocks are going to crash. Like, it needs to happen. It needs to make money. If you spend all this money up, like if you're, I don't know, if you're fucking Subway sandwiches, and you say, we're investing in AI. <laughs> it's going to make our sandwich production better. And we're going to fire people and add AI. And we're going to have AI in all aspects. And AI at corporate. And we're going to have sub Subway AI. <laughs> and all this fucking shit. And it doesn't change your profits. Like, if you don't start making more money, the market freaks out. You spent all this money. You bought GPU systems. Subway's a dumb example. But I'm saying, this is happening all over. Whether you're fucking, I don't know. Amazon or Walmart or, or anyone. Companies all over are saying we're going to invest in AI to change our business. And if it doesn't actually change the business, they spend so much fucking money, it's going to be a disaster. So we're all kind of waiting. Again, a big example is ChatGPT. ChatGPT is valued at $100 billion. They spent a ton of money on GPUs. ChatGPT spends, uh, you know, a fuck ton of Microsoft's money <laughs> to buy GPUs to run ChatGPT, okay? And if that doesn't print money, the value is gonna collapse. It's gonna, it's gonna fuck. Like ChatGPT traffic is down from where it used to be. People aren't, it's not changing people's lives as much as they thought it would. Some people are, it's not zero, but it's not, do you understand? So it's, um, There's there's a risk. There's risks. Um. Are there countries we don't typically think of as high-tech exporters like Taiwan that are starting to compete? Um, no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm getting sick again. I might stop soon. I'm getting sick. Um, no, but there's a lot of countries that are going to try. India, for example, just announced they're going to try to build a semiconductor chip industry from scratch. India just announced this. They want to like just literally put fucking tons of money into building what Taiwan has, but in India. Now, starting from scratch... This is a huge risk. <laughs> they could just pour money in and get nothing out. It could be a huge disaster, but they want to do that. That's what India wants to do. And again, many times countries, including the US, have tried to do this. They've dumped money and got nothing. Because the real risk is um, whatever you build has to make money to get its money back. You know, let's say you spend a, a trillion dollars to build a bunch of chip factories and then nobody uses your factories, they still use TSMC. <laughs> well, then you're fucked. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Then you're mega fucked. So you have to be cutting edge. It's it's just tough. You have to, it's a, it's a real battle. Um. Do, 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 do. Uh. What do you think about the Intel list NVIDIA laptops with ARM CPUs? Potentially a challenger if they can run. I, I, I don't think they matter to me or NVIDIA at all. They're nice. I mean, it's just a small business. This is like, it's not part of the AI business at all. This is, this is again, 
Um, yeah, it's like a small play in the laptop market. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Um, USA doesn't need chips. We have Doritos. Raw, I can't. So I've been ignoring a lot of the stupid messages. I'm just going to give you this one. <laughs> you know, because people have some good questions and a lot of people are just like, they their ADD kicked in, so they have to say some stupid shit. And I just want to give you one, all right? Can I just toss you a bone? <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm getting sniffly uh, and I'm getting a headache, bro. I'm sorry. I, I'm super fucking sick yesterday and today. Uh, I'm glad I finished that little marketing Monday. I think I'm going to call it early. Sorry. Uh, but again, I almost skipped today, and I'm glad I didn't. I, I think I'm going to call it early. Uh, I just don't feel well, bro. I don't feel well. And I I'll, I'll keep going live to try and keep my streak again uh, until I feel better. But I think by next week, we're back on track. And again, I want to say this one more time. Thursday of next week is going to be a very fun stream, I think. Please, if you have anything good for the Reddit, put it for Thursday. Uh, we got something special. So there we go. All right. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, appreciate you and talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.